Hey Skyliners, it is Spicy Jan and I am back to bring you some amazing recipes. Remember, we're talking about changing things up at the holiday time. Perhaps your holiday meal planning might look a little bit different th this year, but let's celebrate it together. And today we're going to again look at some other ideas that we can share in the kitchen, whether it's two, four, or six around the table. I know you're going to love these recipes. Thank you so much to Skyline Living for having me, Spicy Jan, into the beautiful kitchens of all of you out there across Canada. How exciting and thank you so much. So I've been thinking about what we're going to get started with and you already have your list of what we're preparing this evening, but let's get started with our granola. So why I use granola is, or why I'm sharing this with you is because this. A few years ago, a girlfriend of mine who I went to grade school with, we're still friends. One Christmas, we got together, you know, it was probably about five or six years ago, and she brought me a jar of granola. Well, I wasn't really a granola eater, because I always think that in the store, the granola that I buy, it just hurts my teeth. It's too hard. But she gave me this granola, and she made it, and it was beautiful. So I said to her, hey, Jill, like, how'd you make this granola? It didn't seem complicated. It's lovely to just make up on a Sunday and have through the week to have with, um, on your yogurt or on top of your oatmeal, your cereal. Sometimes I even put a couple tablespoons into my smoothie. So she told me how to make it and then I put my own spicy gin twist on it. And what I do is I often at holiday time, I give it to my neighbors. My neighbors have come to love Spicy Jan's granola, and I'm going to show you the jars that I give it to them that in. And uh, but let's get started. So I did an online shop at the Bulk Barn. I like the Bulk Barn, but I am trying to limit how often I go out and how long I stay in locations. So I did an online shop with the Bulk Barn. Typically at the Bulk Burn, I would have taken my own jars because they have that program, but I was just happy to get all of these great items um, that I could just pick up curbside. So here we go. This is so easy. I have my large mixing bowl. I just love my plastic blue mixing bowl. And what it says is one and a half cups of whatever you prefer, but I'm going to show you the ones that I have. So these are raw almonds. This is a half cup scoop. This is not tricky. I know all of you can do this. Now, that was one and a half cups. This is a little extra. If you want to throw them in, throw them in. Just like that. There's no rules when you're making granola. Now, these are some unsalted, and I just prefer to work with unsalted. Um, I use unsalted butter. Everything I use pretty much is unsalted. Just as I'm getting older, I'm just more mindful of my sodium intake. So those were my cashews. I have some left. I'm not going to put those in. Now I really like pumpkin seeds. I usually buy them hulled. They say they're hulled. They're not roasted. And they are not salted. So three scoops is one and a half. That's enough of that one. Now, walnuts. When I was young and my mom would buy walnuts, they were always coming from the grocery store and they didn't always taste good. They were often bitter, but I really like the bulk barn walnuts. These are the halves and although they're big and sometimes my son says, why don't you just like, uh, blend them down a little bit and sometimes I do but I just like that big walnut crunch in my granola so I put about a cup and three quarters of the walnuts now I have my sunflower seeds and I add those just because I think they're yummy gives a little bit different texture these ones again are hulled and unsalted so as you see me mix everything up, oh look, I don't even have a cup and a half of those. That's okay. All I told them when I did my online order was a scoop. So I didn't really know what I was going to get. So here's all my nuts together. You know what's next. So I ended up buying a little bit of coconut. I do like coconut in it, but when we bake our granola, 
it does get, um, I don't want it to burn, so I'm not putting too much coconut in it. I just have a half a cup. Next on your ingredient list, you've got three tablespoons of cinnamon, which might seem like a lot, but the flavor is absolutely beautiful once you have all of your granola made. We cannot forget our oats. These are quick oats. That's all that they had. It's okay, I'll take them. Whether they're a large flake, whether they're, you just don't wanna use a steel cut. If you use a steel cut oats, oh, well that's not gonna work because those need to boil down quite a bit. So I'm gonna put in my one and a half cups. So everything is pretty much one and a half cups. I just find it's a really nice ratio. It makes a good amount of granola. I'm able to... Oh, look at that. Smells amazing. I'm able to have some for us and some to give. My theory is usually when I make granola, I usually make sure that I give one jar to someone. Even if it's not holiday time, it's just a nice thing to be able to gift to make someone's day. So, okay, this looks amazing, but now we have to bind it together. So here's what we're gonna do. In your ingredient listing, what I have right here is I have a half a cup of melted butter. So I'll just give that a little stir. Because it has separated. I'm gonna pop this in. Awesome. And then I have, and again, this was from the bulk barn. I don't usually have honey around, but I got some uh, a small container of honey on my bulk barn order, so I put these two items in. Now you see that it's just a half and half of the butter to the honey, but now we have to work it in. Sometimes when I tell people about this recipe, they put too much honey or they put syrup and it gets either too sticky once you bake it and the stickiness doesn't go away. When you bake it with equal parts honey and butter, it is going to, and you could use coconut oil. Um, it, I've done that as well and it's very delicious. When you, um, if you over sticky it, so too much syrup or if you used a corn syrup, which you could, or too much honey, it's just gonna to get too sticky. It's gonna stick on the bottom of your pan and it's not gonna be loose like granola and break up. This is perfect. I'm showing you because I want you to see what it looks like when you're making the granola at your place. Because your kitchen is gonna smell so good. Your neighbors are gonna come over and they're gonna want a little bit of this as well. So there you go. There's my granola and it's done. Now. I have in the past, sometimes I experiment, I have in the past put vanilla in. I've even put in, um, with essential oils, some orange oil. So if you have essential oils and you have orange and you like that idea, putting maybe five drops of orange oil into your granola mix before you bake it is really super yummy. You can also use cranberries, uh, put in some raisins, some dates even. But you have to be careful with them because they're gonna cook so they're gonna get hard. And for me, as I'm getting older, I don't want any sort of hard bits surprising me for my teeth. So um, this is a perfect mixture and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do now. Super simple. Now grab your baking sheet. So I have my baking sheet here prepared. I have already given it a light uh, buttery coating. And then we're just gonna go like this. You ready? Should slide right out, which it did. We'll just get the last bit of oatmeal there. Everything is well mixed. And then you're just gonna take your time spreading it around the baking sheet. It's not that we need it to be flat, we just want it to be evenly distributed. Awesome.
great. Looks fantastic. Delish. How's that? I think it looks pretty good. You're going to love this. Now, here's the trick to making granola. It burns super easily. So, the instructions that you have, it says 325, which is a low heat. Don't go up higher. 325, 8 minutes. So, you'll put it in. My oven is actually preheated, so it's ready to go. 8 minutes. Set your timer. You might start to smell it. Around 5 minutes, you don't have to, but if you think about it, open up the oven, get a long spatula. I usually use... I'll show you what I use. A little bit of noise there. I usually use um, a serving spoon and I'll just like move things around a little bit. Only eight minutes. Take it out of the oven, give it a good move around, put it back in for five and it's done. If you overcook it, um, you're going to burn the nuts and the seeds. And it's not going to taste very good. So I'm going to pop this into the oven now. And then we're going to get started on something else. So give me just a second. Going into the oven. I'm setting my timer. For how long? That's right. Eight minutes. Timer's on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get started on our codfish dinner. And you're going to love this. I know what the ingredients sounded so simple. But I have everything right here, and that's kind of the beauty of it, is that these aren't complicated items that you have to go out and buy. They're typically things that you have in your house already. So I'm going to go wash and peel my carrot, my sweet potato. I'm going to cut my onion and my potatoes, and I'm going to come right back to you in a second. We're going to get this on. Okay? Go and wash up your veggies. See you in a minute. <laughs> 